Welcome to This Week in Review. Tonight's stories include... I had an interview with Cyril Organ of West Viking College. Virgil Town Council is presently constructing a new dog pound. A Miss Winter Carnival pageant is being planned for February 14th. Things are at a standstill at Fisherman's Wharf and more, so please stay tuned. Before you can improve health, before you can grow nourishing food, before you can plant trees, you need water, clean, safe water. Help at the source through USC Canada, 56 Spark Street, Ottawa. Program Development Officer with West Viking College was in our studio last week. I had an interview with him regarding the adult basic education programs offered at the United Church Hall, as well as the upcoming ABE program that is going to be offered on our community channel. I'm speaking with Cyril Organ, Program Development Officer with West Viking College. Welcome to our studio, Mr. Organ. Good morning, Dave. Glad to be here. Can you briefly describe for us the adult basic education education program that West Viking College and BBS will be offering through this channel? Okay, Dave, what we're dealing with, we've got uh, a high school equivalency program in place. Now, I should talk about ABE generally first to talk about the philosophy of it perhaps, and then we'll get into the kinds of people that we hope to target and the kind of system we use to run the program. and. Hopefully, at the end of the interview, people should be a little bit more knowledgeable about it. What ABE is, is the high school equivalency program that has three separate levels. The first is level one, and that basically targets people who have reading difficulties or left school before they had really learned how to read and write. So I'm reluctant to sort of talk about grade levels, but most people will say, well, how would I fit into this? So typically, ABE level one covers grade levels from uh, pre-reading up to about grade level six. Level two focuses upon primarily high, or junior high school content. So we're looking at about the same kind of content that you would get in grades 7 through 9 in the regular school system. Then level 3 is where the high school equivalency component kicks in. And that's content or the kinds of courses that you would normally get in grade 10 to 12 in the regular system. Now, how people most often will say, well, what's this credit business about? So I think I'll talk about that for a little while, if you wish. Basically, if you're in the high school system now, you're picking up credits if you complete a course, if it's biology 3201. When you finish that course, you pick up two credits for having completed it. Now, ABE is not different, or not any different from that sort of system. Basically, if you complete an ABE level three course, you will get a credit for completing that course. Now, there are a number of people who've left school years ago, and they're saying, but, but boy, I dropped out in grade eight, or I dropped out in grade nine 10 or 15 years ago. You know, where would I fit in? So I would say, if there are people out there in that category, most likely you will 
be placed in ABE level two. You will do content at the grade seven through nine level, but it, basically it's meant to bring you up to speed, to, to bring you back to, uh, to pick you up where you left off and to bring you up so that you will be able to handle the high school content. Mr. Organ's interview will be shown in its entirety after tonight's program. I also had an interview with town manager Mr. Doug Kendall this past week concerning the new dog pound that council is presently constructing. Mr. Kendall, I understand that council is presently constructing a new dog pound. Uh, yes, that's correct, David. Uh, the old pound, we changed that into the museum over the summer. And, uh, we haven't had a dog pound since that time, and we find that the dog problem is starting to increase again, so we felt in our best interest we try and get another dog pound, so we're in, in the process now of constructing a new one. Okay, where will the new dog pound be located? Uh, the new dog pound will be located uh, in the area of the council grade, directly in back of the council grade. Okay, what are the laws pertaining to dogs from the bird jail? Well, uh, David, uh, under the Town of Virgil Dog Regulations and also under the Provincial Dog Act, no dog is allowed to run anywhere in town. It must, unless it's in total control of its owner. Uh, also, dogs must be kept tied on or pinned in at all times. What are the penalties if your dog is caught roaming? Uh, if your dog is caught roaming and we catch the dog, uh, we will impound the dog and it will cost you $25 to get your dog out of the pound. If we uh, get a dog and there's no tag on the dog to identify it, we put it in the pound. Uh, we keep it in the pound for three days. If no one comes to claim the dog, the dog is destroyed. Okay, what are the penalties if your dog does not have a tag? Uh, we require uh, that uh, if we catch a dog without a tag, we require that they purchase a tag before they get the dog back. Uh, also, it might be noted that if we don't catch a dog and a dog is found roaming at large and we can identify the owner of that dog, the owner can be fined anywhere from a maximum to of $1,000 or a minimum of $100. Okay, how many dog tags have you sold this year? I think to date, David, uh, well, it's early in January, but I believe we've sold 40 so far. Okay, uh, how many did you sell last year? Uh, I don't know exactly, but it was somewhere in the area of 120 to 130 dog tags were sold last year. I also understand that council is seeking a new dog catch? Uh, yes, we will be uh, in February. Uh, we will be uh, seeking applications for the position of dog catcher. Uh, Mr. Billard is uh, leaving town, so he can no longer perform those duties. Okay, Mr. Kendall, thanks for speaking with us. You're welcome, Dave. After Mr. Kendall's interview, I took our cameras to a town council grads where the dog pound is being constructed. The new dog pound is being constructed in accordance with SPCA regulations. The building will be sealed and insulated. It will have an eater, two windows, and it will contain water and food for the dogs. The reason why council is taking action in constructing a new dog pound is that they've been receiving complaints about dogs roaming around the schools and getting into garbage. If you haven't already purchased a dog tag for your dog, you should do so at the town office. Hi, I'm Chris Cook, the ambassador at large of the War Amps Stamp Program. This is the late Carl Helsinger who inspired us with his message, Yes, You Can. This is Ashtar, our buddy from the planet Danger. He is our friend who reminds us that safety is no accident. And Cool Hand Luke, his message, say nope to dope. We all want to remind you, do your best, have fun, but play safe. A message from the War Amps of Canada. Once there was a man Hello. who wanted to be a local hero. You know, help out my community. But he didn't know how to get started. That's a toughie. Until he asked his friends and discovered that many of them were already local heroes. Hey, 
I could do that too. And before long, he was working with his friends to make his community a better place. And he was a local hero. Imagine that. And you can be too. Imagine a new spirit of giving. Be a local hero. Last week, we filled you in on some of the plans that have been made for this year's Winter Carnival. Well, one of the other plans is a Miss Winter Carnival pageant that is scheduled to be held on February 14th. This pageant is going to be similar to that of the Come Home Year pageant. On May 14, 1988, 15 young ladies in grades 10 to 12 were escorted to the stage by the gentlemen of the Royal Canadian Sea Cadet Corps Bob Bartlett, in hopes of being crowned Miss Come Home Year. During the course of the evening, the girls were judged on a number of different categories, and at the end of the evening, Miss Burgio Come Home Year was announced. Miss Coming Home Year Queen 1988 is contestant number, let me tell you this joke. Well, on February 14, 1993, young ladies in grades 9 to 12 will have an opportunity to be escorted to the stage to try for a similar honor, Miss Winter Carnival 1993. These young ladies, I'm sure, will be just as radiant and will be judged in much the same manner. Also during the pageant, local entertainers will be performing while the judges are making their difficult decisions. George Bellard of Stephenville will be your MC for the evening. If there are any young ladies who are interested but have not yet signed up, you can do so by calling Dave at 886-2243 or any one of the committee members by, by 3 p.m. tomorrow, Tuesday, January 26th. I stopped by the Bait Depot Wharf this past week to see how the inshore fishermen were doing with their catches. Mr. Lesescock informed me that at present none of the inshore fishermen are fishing. One fisherman did have his nets out last week. However, upon checking two of his nets, he found one codfish and six brims. So then he too took in his nets. Mr. Escock is anticipating that the fishermen will begin fishing again sometime in February. We have another full lineup of playback scheduled for next week. They include Boys. Producing a calf takes a feeling on Monday at 7 p.m. we have tape number two of, of the Trials of Life so series, continuing sure the line. The calf has the best father around. On Tuesday at 7 p.m. we'll be airing a program that we received from the War Amputations of Canada entitled Bulletproof. You be the judge. On Wednesday night, after the primary preschool, rather, TV bingo, be sure and stay tuned for the Miss Come Home Year pageant, 1988. On Thursday night, we'll be airing a program that we received from the RCMP entitled Winter Driving, Keep Your Cool. That will also be shown at 7 p.m. And of course, on Saturday morning, we'll have Karen, Aaron, and Pansy on Storytime. And of course, tune in again next Sunday night for This Week in Review, followed by the bandwagon. 
If you have a request you'd like to put in for the upcoming bandwagon, you can call it into our office anytime tomorrow. Just $27 a month, less than a dollar a day, will mean a world of difference to a young child's life overseas. Foster Parents Plan has been able to maintain a record of sending at least 85% of all donations to help the children, their families, and their communities. Join us as we do our best to help people who really need it. We'll make sure that your participation does make a difference. Call Foster Parents Plan, toll free, 1-800-268-7174. Okay, people, your assignment today is very simple. Make this earth as beautiful as possible. Any questions? Get started. <laughs> Does anyone know where Lisa is? Yeah, I do. Do a good turn for the earth. A community service thought from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Community events. The Ski Club TV bingo held on Wednesday night was won by April Dowland, Roberta Sims, and Harry Ingram. The preschool will be having a TV bingo on Wednesday night. Cards are a dollar each or six for five dollars and are available in most stores around town. Please support the preschool by playing TV bingo. RCSCC 157 Bob Bartlett Sea Cadet Corps is looking for new officers. We are looking for any persons who are willing to give of their free time. Persons must also be willing to participate in training exercises conducted for officers at Gander or Greenwood, Nova Scotia. Interested persons, please contact Sub-Lieutenant Walford Porter, Commanding Officer, phone 886-2159. Job Order Title, Outreach Counselor Salary Negotiable Location, Virgil Vacancies, one. Requirements. Preference will be given to applicants who possess a university de degree background with course in psychology or related discipline. Duties. Interview counsel clients eligible under the recovery program towards an action plan which will address their training needs. Employer. Virgil Lyons Outreach Committee. P.O. Box 323, Virgil, Newfoundland. A0M1A0. Contact person is Jerry Billard at 886-3389. Apply to the Burgio Lions Club Outreach Committee, Box 323, Burgio, Newfoundland, AOM 1AO. The deadline for this job is January 26, 1993. Well, that's it for tonight's program. Please stay tuned now for more of the telethon entertainment that was taped for our telethon held in March of 1991. On behalf of BBS and all BBS volunteers, I'm Dave Cooper, wishing you a great week. Good night. I'm speaking with Cyril Organ, Program Development Officer with West Viking College. Welcome to our studio, Mr. Organ. Good morning, Dave. Glad to be here. Can you briefly describe for us the adult basic education education program that West Viking College and BBS will be offering through this channel? Okay, Dave, what we're dealing with, we've got uh, a high school equivalency program in place. Now, I should talk about ABE generally first to talk about the philosophy of it perhaps, and then we'll get into the kinds of people that we hope to target and the kind of system we use to run the program. and. Hopefully, at the end of the interview, people should be a little bit more knowledgeable about it. What ABE is, is 
the high school equivalency program that has three separate levels. The first is level one, and that's basically targets people who have reading difficulties or left school before they had really learned how to read and write. So I'm reluctant to sort of talk about grade levels, but most people will say, well, how would I fit into this? So typically, ABE level one covers grade levels from uh, pre-reading up to about grade level six. Level two focuses upon primarily high, or junior high school content. So we're looking at about the same kind of content that you would get in grade seven through nine in the regular school system. Then level three is where the high school equivalency component kicks in. And that's content or the kinds of courses that you would normally get in grade 10 to 12 in the regular system. Now, how people most often will say, well, what's this credit business about? So I think I'll talk about that for a little while, if you wish. Basically, if you're in the high school system now, you're picking up credits if you complete a course, if it's biology 3201, when you finish that course, you pick up two credits for having completed it. Now, ABE is not different, or not any different from that sort of system. Basically, if you complete an ABE level three course, you will get a credit for completing that course. Now, there are a number of people who've left school years ago and they're saying, but, but boy, I dropped out in grade eight, or I dropped out in grade nine, 10 or 15 years ago. You know, where would I fit in? So I would say, if there are people out there in that category, most likely you will be placed in ABE level two. You will do content at the grade seven through nine level, but it, basically it's meant to bring you up to speed, to, to bring you back to, uh, to pick you up where you left off and to bring you up so that you will be able to handle the high school content. Now there's a neat wrinkle for people who are older and that comes in, in the form of maturity credits. If you're 21 years of age, you're entitled to a one maturity credit. If you're 23, you're entitled to two. And it goes up to age 29 and beyond, so that people who've been out of school for a while will already start the program bringing credits with them because they've already done stuff over the years that perhaps wasn't done in school, but they've learned a considerable amount. So if you have people in the audience, for instance, who are feeling, well, you know, I've got nothing to bring with me, well, you already may have a number of credits based on your life experiences. Now let's say that you've come in and you find that you're placed in level two. And one of the early concerns is that, uh, but in level two, I don't get any credits. Now there's a provision in level two that for every five ABE level two courses you complete, you're entitled to one ABE level three credit. Now, um, is this clear as I'm going along? So let's say we've got someone who's 29 years of age or older, and they decide, well, boy, I, I want to go back and finish my high school. They can come in with five maturity credits, work their way through the level two courses, and pick up an additional four credits. So that's a total of nine credits before you get into level three for many people. So I come in, perhaps I dropped out of school in 1984 and I got, say, 10 or 12 credits. Now, most people say, well, what are you going to do with me now? Well, basically, if you wish to register for ABE level three, what we will want from you is this. 
bring in your high school transcript, and that's your record of marks. And we'll take a look at that transcript. You will be given credit for the credits that you've done in high school. The next question we'll ask from you is, well, what do you hope to do? So people might be a little bit foggy about, well, boy, I just want to get high school. But we'll insist, and we can provide courses to help you with this. We'll want you to give some thought about, well, what do you want to do after you finish high school? If it's a course, a trade course, for instance, well, we'll select the course, the ABE courses that will help you to get your welding certificate. You might want to go to university to do a program like pharmacy. So we'll say, okay, you brought 10 credits in with you. So now we know that you're going to need a lot of chemistry, you're going to need biology, and you're going to need mathematics. So we will give, we will pick the courses from the ABE program that will prepare you for the pharmacy program. So in a nutshell, the program caters to a wide range of people. It caters to people who left high school. Uh, we've got students in our programs that dropped out, for instance, 30 years ago or 40 years ago and are coming back. These people bring credits with them because of maturity. We get young people who are 19 or 20 years old who dropped out two or three years ago. They might have had credits from the high school. So we recognize those credits and place them in the program accordingly. So if there are people in Burgio, I'm sure that there are a number of people who may be interested. Give some thought to the idea of what have I done in the past? When did I leave school? Why do I want to finish high school? And come and see us. We'll help you work your way through it. Now, I'm, Dave, you have other questions here if you uh, related to the program, if you care to ask those. OK, what, uh, what are the tuition fees? OK, if you're in ABE level one, or ABE level two, there are no tuition fees. Bring a dollar along with you for insurance, and that's the only fee that you will be expected to pay. If you're in ABE level three, we have it set up. Basically, it, it amounts to about six or $30 for a 63-hour program. So if you want to register for ABE level three, you can expect to pay $30 in this coming semester. OK, where do or where can students register for adult basic education? Registration for our normal continuing education programs will be conducted within the next couple of weeks. And I believe we'll publicize through the BBS the time and date for that registration. OK, and where will materials be available for these courses? Dave, normally what we do, if you register for ABE, you will be provided with the, well again, I should backtrack a little bit. If you come in, we'll sit down with you and say, look, what have you done in the past? How many credits did you complete in high school? You might have done a course in baking or something that may entitle you to other credits and whatever. And then we will help you select the courses you need to prepare for whatever it is you want to do after high school completion. Once we've selected the courses, you will start each course that you require, and we'll offer that course in an individualized format. Now, an individualized format means that you will progress through each course depending upon how hard you work at it, uh, the number of hours you punch, and whatever. So we may have a group of people that start the same course at the same time, but end up completing it much earlier and then go on to another course. The materials that you will require for the course will be provided when you show up. So if I'm doing a math course, uh, let's say it's fractions. 
for instance. We will hand you what we call a module, which simply lists all of the things that you will learn in this particular module. And it will then direct you to certain textbooks, which will be provided in the classroom setting. So basically, you should expect to bring pens, pencils, paper, and if you find that you can't get at the book or you'd like to have the book at home or whatever, we can assist you if you would like, for instance, to buy the textbooks. Okay? Will there be any additional costs for materials over and above? No, you pay your tuition uh, beyond the normal paper and pencils and this sort of stuff. There won't necessarily be any costs. Now, what we found is that many students will say, boy, I'd like to have my own books. Now, we can help you out in that. A lot of, we have one student in St. George's, for instance, who attends nine hours of classes per week and then does 20 hours at home. So he's saying, look, I want to buy a couple of books so I can have them at home to work with. But that's the decision of the student. Okay. Uh, well, the uh, ABE course that will be offered on Community Channel differ from regular ABE. Okay. We're a community college. I guess basically we've been bringing the college to the community now for several years. And I think this project will allow us to bring the college into the home, and again, through your services. Basically, what we're intending to do is this. We have a full-time ABE program established here in the community now that has about 15 students. We offer part-time programming in the evening. And what we're attempting to do here is to sort of broaden the reach of ABE in Virtue. So basically, the way it will work, uh, I'll, I'll use myself as an example. I might be the instructor hired for this project. So for a couple of evenings a week or at times that are convenient for people and, you know, the college in consultation with you and with students in the future will determine the best possible times to run the program. But I, as an instructor, will come into the studio for a three-hour session. Now, I might know that there are a number of students who are working at uh, Belterra, for instance. So I might devote the first hour of uh, tomorrow night's show, for example, to saying, look, I know that John and Joe and Jack and Betty and Louise or whoever are working on the basic algebra unit. So I might go to the board, and we have no one now to sort of focus in on the board here now, but I might work my way through a number of sample problems that I know the people are have been having problems with. So it might take the form of a lecture for an hour. And then I'll have, uh, let's imagine for now that there's a phone like, line right here. And it might be that Jack is working, he's been following along with what I've been teaching, but then he finds that, hold it, boy, I don't understand what you're doing here, no. So he can go to the phone, call up the studio, and announce, boy, look, I'm tr I've followed you up to this point, but now I don't really know what you did here. So I can say, well, well, let's, let's see, you know, where, where are you confused or whatever? And if need be, I can go to the board and say, okay, well, let's work our way through it again. And I can talk back and forth. It'll be through the for form of a speaker phone in the studio so that uh, I can be working at the board and speaking directly to the student and help him work through the problem. Now, many people are maybe thinking, uh, boy, you know, you won't catch me calling in because everybody will know who I am or might think that I'm stunned or something because I can't figure this out. And I would say, don't be so foolish. I mean, what we're attempting to do here is to bring education into the home and to make it more convenient for people. So if you're at home 
you might spend two days trying to sort your way through a problem. Or you might be able to, if you call in here, I might be able to work your, or help you work through that problem in five minutes, and then you go on. So, I think we're all aware that this is very much an experiment. But I would encourage people in the community to pay attention to what it is that we're doing here, to get involved in the project, to register if they would like to work towards high school completion. And if we, when we get it, this program up and running, if they're experiencing difficulty with a problem, call in. And I think it'll work for everybody. Okay, when will this course be starting? Well, uh, hopefully early in February. Will the tuition fees for this course be the same as regular AVE? Yes. Now, I should, I should emphasize that this is not meant to replace the full-time offering here or the part-time offering. Basically, what we're hoping to do is to broaden the reach of the program so that uh, we may currently have 15 students, for instance, in ABE Level 3 in the evening. With this system, we might be able to broaden it to 30 people. I would like to see everybody in Burgio pounding on the doors here in the next couple of weeks saying, we want in. And if so, we'll rise to the occasion. Okay, so where can a student go to register? Okay, again, registration for normal continuing education programs will be taking place in the next couple of weeks. So I would recommend that people stay tuned to the studio and to watch your bulletin board. And we'll have the time and place posted throughout the community. If you're interested, show up at registration, and there will be people there who can answer questions about ABE, can answer questions about the kind of approach that we hope to take you know, through your services, and basically be able to give you an idea of where you stand with the program, how many credits you might have, how many credits you might need, we can give you a, a rough idea of how long it will take you to complete. And I think if you are the least bit interested, people should show up. Okay, so how long will the course run? Okay, now the project through the BBS will run for 16 weeks initially, and we'll see how it goes. Beyond that, we've got funding for 16 weeks, then I guess it'll depend on the success of the program. If we see that people are using it, but well, we're going to have to look at this with a view to extending. Now, but of course, that, that's some ways in the future before we can deal with that question. The position of project area coordinator has been posted for this course. Can you explain this position? Okay, what we want is someone who will serve as the college person in Burgio who will drive this project or coordinate the activities related to this project and also be the contact person for the college in the community. The job is currently posted. It will be advertised in Saturday's paper. And I would encourage all interested applicants to apply. Okay, you also uh, mentioned in your press release the Learn to Read series. Yes. Uh, what group is this series generated towards? Okay, the Learn to Read series is directed towards the, le the level one student. And the, the level one student usually left school before they learned to read and write or haven't had to read or write in their life but now would like to do so. So what the Learn to Read series does is it provides sort of introductory lessons. It uh, will deal with vocabulary, for instance, and lead the student through the half-hour program into developing additional vocabulary and basically helping them to learn to read and write. Now, there are print materials available with that package. 
I've left 20 odd copies here now, for instance. If there's someone in the community who would like to learn to read and write, they might want to pop by the studio and pick up the resources, the print material. And we'll be running, there are 30 one half hour segments or shows related to, to the print materials. And we'll start running those on a, a schedule that we'll develop depending upon demand in the next couple of weeks. So. Okay, Mr. Orkin, well, thanks for speaking with us. Well, I'm glad to be here. I'm excited about the project. The college is committed to increasing its presence in the Burgio area. If anyone has got any more questions about the program, I'd invite them to call me. I can be reached at 643-7717 uh, at the college. And I'll be making uh, more regular visits here in the next couple of weeks as we try to get this up and running. Okay, well, thanks for speaking with us, and perhaps we'll get another interview a little later. Uh, yes. In fact, I'd like to bring along a couple of people who've gone through the program at other centers, and they might be able to uh, explain what it was like to come back and the kinds of fears that they had about coming back to the classroom. And uh, so we should try to schedule that. Okay, well, we look forward to it. Thank you. They're not hip or modern, fancy, or fashionable. They no longer fit your prescription or your style. But for one person living in a developing country, these used eyeglasses will put the world in focus, maybe for the very first time. Don't throw away someone's chance for a clearer tomorrow. Donate your used eyeglasses. Another beautiful day in the neighborhood. But have you ever considered that your lifestyle might not be contributing to the beauty of our environment? Maybe it's time to change the way we commute by using public transportation and carpools. The more efficiently we use energy, the more positive the effects for our environment. So let's be energetic about using energy efficiently.